So we had a bad, really bad incident happen just the other night. Here in particular with this maple tree of ours. Look at all the debris oh, on the yeah. top of the bucket. You can probably see some marks on the ground right here. Let me bring you around and I'll show you the side of the tree and then we'll tell you a little story about what happened. Didn't knock my bad. bucket over though. <laughs> yeah, it did not knock your bucket over. You can see all this damage here, up in through here, down here. To the night I was just about getting ready to go to bed and I heard this loud like crashing sound and a really loud boom and it shook our house like our house is only 50 feet from from this tree here and it shook our house good and I was like okay I don't know what that was but I need to get my flashlight and I need to go outside and check this out because that was not normal where we live out here in the country it is generally quiet unless it's planting season or harvest season First thing I did, like I said, I grabbed my flashlight and looked out the front window and right up against that tree was a car and I could see like the, the hazard lights were flashing and my first thought was that crash was loud. It was hard, I could feel it in my house. Whoever's in that car is probably hurt. Yeah. So the first thing I did was call 911 before I even left the house. They said, okay, fine, we'll send somebody out. Can you check on the people in the car and see if they're even okay? So I shined, went outside, shined my flashlight in. There was kind of a guy hunched over, laying down and he started rustling, moving. And that's when like the 911 people told me, okay, just get away, just, just leave them be. People are on the way. We don't have our turkey fryer set up yet to boil our, our sap. That's like gotta be like a good five gallons worth already. Yeah, it's only been 48 hours since we tapped. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we're just gonna store it in the fridge for tonight and maybe tomorrow we'll get the turkey fryer out and start yeah. boiling it down. Yeah. But our incident, um, I started to walk away from the car and the guy that was in the car got out, fell to the ground, um, kind of got back up. He was he was pretty out of it. And so I went over to him, I'm like, dude, just, just chill, you know, come over here and sit down for a minute. And his head was gashed open bad. I mean, he, was, he had blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. I tried to get him, come on over, sit on my porch. He started going on about, the cops, you know, don't call the cops, don't call the cops. I'm like, well, I already did. Yeah. I called the cops before I even left the house. Yeah. You know, whoever's in that car, I assumed you were hurt and you were hurt bad. I'm fine, I'm fine. I need to get out of here. Uh, then I, he started asking you to take him home. Yeah, I'm like, get out of here. Will you take me home? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, I, I think the guy had been drinking. I mean, I'm not can't be sure. Well, but you have evidence. That <laughs> there was quite a bit of evidence in the yeah. vehicle, even um, that he was pretty well intoxicated. There was another car that had drove by and stopped because they saw, hey, there's something going on. Maybe these people need help. So since I wasn't going to take this guy home, he decided, there's a car. I'll ask them people. Uh, by asking, <laughs> he jumped in their passenger yes, door. Yes, opened the passenger door, jumped in and said, take me home. Yes, and like closed Covered the door blood. behind him. <laughs> so those people, I felt bad for them. It was a young couple. Um, basically told them to get out of the car. Yeah. And the guy took off walking down the street. And I think it was probably five minutes later, maybe. Yeah, cops so started showing fire up. Fire department, and, police, mm -hmm. ambulance all showed up. Where's the guy? He's gone down the street somewhere. So they got out their, their canine dogs and they went searching for him. They were going through the fields all back around and I don't think they ever ended up finding him. I think they just kind of 
gave yeah. up or it assumed maybe someone else picked him up and, and yeah, took him I away. I'm not really sure. But oh, what a night. I tell you what, we worried so much about that turn and mm -hmm. like people fly around that corner. I yeah, think. there's a little curve just to the yeah. down the street from us, the, the direction the guy was coming. So when he came, he didn't turn. He went straight, hit the guardrail, rode the guardrail rail around, jumped a ditch mm -hmm. and then ended up on our tree. You think our tree's going to be okay? I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I mean, I feel for the guy. I, I, I definitely don't um, empathize with stupidity and drunk driving. So the guy gets no empathy from me for doing that at all. But I worry about him and that he was severely head trauma mm -hmm. and ran off. And I don't know if he's lying dead somewhere or if he's got to safety and got care. Um, but care of my tree. I told Todd, I think I'm just going to call the local tree nursery. Um, they do a lot of like landscaping and tree maintenance. Have them come check it out and see if there's something that we shouldn't do to try to protect it. I don't mm -hmm. know if it being the age that it is, if it we'll could handle that. Yeah. yeah. But if it it's, I mean, we only have the two maple trees <laughs> on our property, and I, I want to do what I can to protect it. Yeah. So maybe they have some wrap or something. You yeah. can at least keep the insects from getting yeah, in there and right. give the exactly. tree time to heal back over. Exactly. Yeah. But so we don't know. We don't know the. Night. Yeah, it was crazy. We don't know the ultimate outcome. We don't know if if the police caught him, if he went to the hospital, if or. He's out in the field somewhere still. Yeah, I'm not right, really sure. Right. It was a nervous night, though. Our dogs barked all night long. They, mm -hmm. they knew something bad. They're still barking. Mm -hmm. um, they knew something was up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, just never have to be prepared, you know. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the guy wasn't, um, you know, so belligerent that he was dangerous to us, too. Yeah. You know, I guess that's always a fear is that, you know, there's been recently in our area a couple drive-by shootings, um, not in our area, but in the in the county that we live in. So I guess, you know, your anxiety is just mm -hmm. a little bit higher when things like this happen. Like, I just, yeah, I like our peaceful place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I was telling them earlier on in the video, I'm like, where we live, it's quiet. Yeah. If it's not planting season or harvest season, yeah, it's quiet here yeah. when the tractors aren't running. Yeah, and and I definitely, as I was trying to get the guy towards the porch last night, and and I told him when I told him I'd already called the cops, and he looked at me, I I got nervous a little mm -hmm. bit because I'm like, okay, is this guy gonna start throwing punches yeah, at me? Is right, he gonna? Right. So my posture immediately changed when his posture changed mm -hmm. and I became a little more defensive about myself of, okay, separating. I yourself. need to protect mm -hmm. myself yeah. from this person. And mm -hmm. so my first thought was I need to help him because he was obviously very injured. But right, right. To protect yourself too. Yep. So we'll see what comes of it, if anything. Maybe if we find out anything, we'll clue you in on future videos, but... That's enough excitement for 2021. We can be done now. That was a lot of excitement <laughs> yeah. for our little homestead. Right. Our maple syrup tapping is going to keep going. Yep. It's only been going for a couple days now. we got about five gallons. We usually shoot for 40. about 40 to 50 gallons yeah, 40 each year, which gallons. boils down to about one gallon of syrup when yeah. all is said and done. So. Yep. No. This will be fun. 40 to 50 gallons, one gallon of syrup. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because maple, maple typically goes 40 to 1 ratio. Yeah. A, a pure sugar maple tree. Yeah. Walnut trees can go 50 to 1. Birch yeah. trees can go 60 to 1. There, there's different ratios for different tree types. So hmm. you need a lot to make a little. Yes. But we'll keep taking you guys along. We usually get about a gallon a year, though. Right. So see you guys on the next one. Whatever fun that'll be. <laughs> yeah, you never know with us. <laughs>